Hello, welcome, it's Jennifer and I'm glad you're here. Today I am focusing on heat embossing. There are many techniques that you can do with heat embossing. However, I am focusing on my top five favorite heat embossing techniques. I will also have basic tips for getting good results with your heat embossing throughout the video. The best part about the five techniques that I'm sharing is that they can be done with a variety of stamps and inks and likely something you already have in your stash. Let's get started with my first favorite technique, and this is a basic one. This is heat emboss resist. Now, a lot of the other techniques I share today have kind of a twist on heat emboss resist, but this is the good old fashioned way of doing it where you heat emboss a background and then apply ink over it. However, you know me, I'll step it up just a little bit to make it even more special. This technique is especially good for backgrounds. Now for my background, I'm using the Simon Says Stamp Jumbled Heart Stamp. Really any stamp will work here. I especially like ones that have outlines to them like these hearts, but you could use whatever you have. I'm putting it into my Misty stamping tool and I also have a light peach piece of cardstock. Any light colored cardstock or white will work here. I use my anti-static powder tool. Highly recommend that. You wanna get a crisp, clean, heat embossed image. And I'm inking up the stamp with Versamark ink. This is a clear, sticky ink that you'll barely see, but it'll hold our embossing powder when we add it. Now I'm adding Hero Art's clear embossing powder. Any clear embossing powder would work. And I'll make sure that I cover the entire background very well. I like to hold my paper flat as I add the powder to make sure it really connects with all of the exposed ink. All right, now I'll heat set that, and you can already see that image a little bit. It's a little bit darker and shiny, but I want to make it stand out even more. This step is optional, but what I'm doing is stamping the same image again right on top of where we've already heat embossed. This will give us a second layer of heat embossing, so you'll have more dimension and more shine. Just make sure you let it cool and use your anti-static powder tool again. Put it back into your stamping tool so you're stamping directly on top of the heat embossing you've already done. Then you can add another layer of clear embossing powder and heat set it. Again, this you could skip if you want, but this will give you a smoother heat embossed result. Sometimes heat embossing can look a little bumpy, but if you do two layers, it'll be super smooth and have a little bit more dimension. I'll do that a couple times in this video and I'll point it out when I do so you can see the difference. So here you can see we have kind of a tone on tone look with shine wherever the embossing is. Now for the fun part where we do the resist technique over this heat embossing. We're going to apply ink over this entire background and wherever the heat embossed image is, it will resist the ink we put on top. So here I am applying different colors of Tim Holtz Distress Ink. I used Abandoned Coral, Picked Raspberry, and Seedless Preserves. But you could use whatever dye inks or distress inks or distress oxide inks you may have. So I am applying a light amount of these inks over it. I don't want too much contrast, but you could go for more contrast if you want. And what happens is wherever that heat embossing is, it resists the color we put on top, kind of trapping and keeping that light peach color of cardstock showing through. After you have applied whatever inks that you want to over that heat embossing, I do recommend taking a dry cloth and really buffing the surface. That will remove any little bit of ink that may be resting on top of the heat embossing and really allow that heat embossed image to pop. I love the look of this. I wish you could see the shine and texture in real life. Now you could leave this as is, but you know me, I like to step things up a bit. So I wanted to add some shine. I have some Ranger's Perfect Pearl pigment powders and I put about a teaspoon of it into a water bottle that's full of water. And I keep this on hand, I've had this for years. I shake it whenever I wanna use it and then I spray that over the whole surface and it gives it, it this kind of pearly shine. The heat embossing still will resist it, so it just adds a softer, sparkly shine over the ink that surrounds the heat embossed image. Again, I wish you could see the shine of this in real life. It has a beautiful, soft look to it. 
All right, now while that background dries, let's go ahead and create our sentiments. For the Miss You, I'm using the Simon Says Stamp CZ Design Hi There Greeting Stamp Set and Coordinating Dies. I am crazy about this bundle. You can buy them separate, use them separate, but I like them together because there are a lot of classic uh, sentiments in here with a style that works with a variety of cards. So I can easily stamp and die cut a sentiment and add it wherever I want. Now for the hi there and love ya, the dies aren't included in the coordinating die set. Instead, there are these separate dies. So you could use the love you die and the shadow or just use the shadow along with the love you stamp in the stamp set. I like that she kind of broke these up a bit so that you have some options on how you use them and what you invest in. But I will say, if you're looking for a large stamp set and coordinating dies with a lot of great basic greetings in it with a classic style, this is a fantastic option. Although I'm only using the Miss You sentiment on this card, I'm going to go ahead and stamp and die cut a bunch of sentiments so I have them ready to go. So here I have a piece of white cardstock where I've cut all of the coordinating dies for that stamp set. Then I have my Misty stamping tool and I'm putting a sticky mat into the tool and then I'll lay the negative space of the die cutting that I just did right on top of the sticky mat. If you don't have a sticky mat, you can just put a little temporary tape in the openings of the die cuts. Now I'm popping each of those die cuts that I just created into the openings and then I will line up my clear stamps on top of each of those die cuts. It's very easy to look through and see how to do this. If you need a little more contrast, you could make your template that negative space out of a darker cardstock and then put white die cuts in the opening. And that might make it a bit easier, but I found these were okay to line up as is. So after I have all of my stamps lined up with the die cuts, I will close the door on my stamping tool and then I can start stamping. I will stamp this with Altenew Black Pigment Ink. You could use absolutely any ink you want. I chose this ink because it stamps nice and dark and very crisp. And if you want to, you can add clear embossing powder to it and heat set it. So after I stamp that, look at I have all those sentiments die cut and stamped and ready to go. Now this one here, I will heat emboss later on and add it on a card. But for this card, I'm just using the Miss You. But while I have this template made, I will off screen create a bunch of sentiments to save for later. You could even keep the template with the stamp set so you could use it again and again. I'm telling you, this stamp set is going to be in my to use bin for a long time. All right, now let's create that love sentiment that's behind the miss you. For this, I use the My Favorite Things Tall Love Die. I have a piece of white cardstock that's the same size as my note card, four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I'm taping the die towards the top center. This piece here will serve as a template. I will line this up over my note card where I have my ink piece trimmed down and glued to the background. I will then tape this on the sides and now I can use this as a guide to glue the letters for the word love into the openings. I'm using a strong liquid adhesive. This is Gina K Connect in a fine tip bottle and then I will place each letter in place. By using that template, the negative space die cut, I'm able to make sure that my letters are straight and that they're spaced nicely. It really is a big time saver. Once those letters are dry, I can remove that template and use it on another card, which you'll see later on in this video. I did glue additional letters for love on top of it so it had a bit of dimension. And then I added that Miss You die cut sentiment that I created earlier from the Hi There Greeting stamp set. I also added a few silver die cut hearts here and there. So you can see that heat emboss resist background. It has a little shimmer thanks to the perfect pearls and water that I sprayed on top. So with this first example, we share a basic heat emboss resist a wonderful technique that works with a variety of stamps and inks. Okay, it's time for my second favorite heat embossing technique. And this is a spin on the heat embossed resist. And that is to use watercolor on top or some sort of color along with water. The raised heat embossing forms little walls that create little areas or pools of color and gives amazing results. 
Now for this one, I'm using the new Simon Says Stamp Lace Heart Kaleidoscope Background Stamp. I really like the fine lines on this. Any kind of outline stamp is great for this, especially backgrounds. Now this time I am using Tim Holtz watercolor paper. I do recommend any kind of watercolor paper here as we're going to add a lot of water to it. Tim Holtz watercolor paper is my favorite because it's bright white and that has one side with texture and one side that's smooth. I'm stamping onto the smooth side. I use my anti-static powder tool and now I'm stamping the background stamp with Versamark ink. I often like to double stamp my Versamark. Because it's clear, you can't tell if you have a good impression. So I feel like stamping it twice really kind of ensures that you've done a good job and that you'll have a complete image when you add the embossing powder. Once again, I'm adding Hero Art's clear embossing powder. You could also use white embossing powder here if you prefer. And then I will heat set it. Now for the fun part, you can add any watercolor that you want over this and the heat embossing will resist it. Now I'm taping my background down onto something flat. I happen to be using my Misty stamping tool and using Altenew satin tape to tape it down. Now I chose to use Lindy's Magical Powders as my kind of watercolor. These are so much fun because they burst full of lots of colors when they come in contact with water and they have lots of shimmer. A little goes a long way with these and there are a lot of beautiful options available. I will link up here on the top right and below in my description to a video that shows much more about these magical powders. I'm using them briefly today. So over my heat embossing area, I'm spraying the surface generously with water so that there are kind of little puddles of water between the heat embossed walls that we created by doing the heat embossing. Now I'm using a dry brush to kind of tap some different colors on here. Now I ended up using a bit more powder than you need to do. You can use a lot less if you want to. Again, a little goes a long way, but I kind of wanted a rainbow going from the top to the bottom. You could put the powder down first and then spray with water, or you can do what I'm doing, which is put down water first, then sprinkle in the powder, and you can see how the powder starts to move already. Then I'll spray it even more with water to see what areas I need to add into. I noticed I didn't do well at putting powder along the edges, so I'm just tapping a bit more there. And you can also use a wet brush to kind of move the color around. But I encourage you to leave it. Notice how I'm kind of moving it around and messing with it. Don't do that. The results are usually better if you just let it do its thing. So set that aside for a while, give it some time to dry, and you'll be amazed at the results. If you have some areas that are too dark, you can dip a dry cloth into it to kind of absorb that dark color. But again, I encourage you to leave it alone. I'm not great at leaving it alone, but it always gives the best results. After trimming it down, look at this beautiful result when it's dry. You have this kind of kaleidoscope of color and lots of shimmer. Now I trimmed that background down and added it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. I added the My Favorite Things Tall Love die cuts along with a Love You Sentiment from the Simon Says Stamp CZ Design Hi There Greeting stamp set and die set that I showed you on the last card. Now what is really cool about this technique is that by doing the heat embossing first and then adding watercolor on top, the walls that are created by the heat embossing because it's raised creates little puddles of color, creating this fun kind of kaleidoscope look. You could do this with any type of watercolor that you want. I just really like how easy and magical these Lindy's Magical Powders are. So I encourage you to give this a try. It's definitely one of my top five heat embossing technique favorites. Now it's time for my third favorite heat embossing technique, and that is trapped embossed resist. So we're doing embossed resist again, as we did before, but this time we're trapping some stamping underneath it. Sounds complicated, but it's quite easy. I'm using two background stamps for this. The Simon Says Stamp Concentric Hearts, which you see here on the right, What's cool is these hearts come apart, so you can stamp each heart separately or in a different color. 
I plan to keep them all connected except for that center area that says love you. And I'll stamp it as one complete stamp. But do know, you can take them apart very easily and do different colors for each stamp. I'm also using the Simon Says Stamp Friendship Text Background Stamp. We'll actually use this stamp first. I'm placing it into my Misty stamping tool and I have a piece of white cardstock already placed inside of the tool. Now this we're going to stamp with a very light ink. You could use a darker ink if you want to, but I want something subtle here. For this step of this process, I do recommend a stamp with lots of detail, such as a text background stamp. Now I'm inking up my stamp with Hero Arts Soft Granite Ink, which is a nice soft gray ink. It's kind of a neutral color, and that way I can add whatever colors I want once we do our technique. I do recommend heat setting this. You want this ink to be very dry before going on to the next step. If the ink is wet at all, it might mess up our heat embossing. Now I have the concentric heart stamp. I'm just using those outside hearts and I'm placing that on top of the stamping we've already done. I'll close the door on my Misty stamping tool to grab that stamp. And now I'll use an anti-static powder tool and then ink up the stamp generously with the Versamark ink. Again, this is a clear sticky ink, so you won't really see it. So be sure to double stamp it if you want to, to make sure that it really stamps well, but you should be good to go as long as your ink pad has enough ink in it. All right, now we can add clear embossing powder. I recommend clear embossing powder here as we are trapping that stamping that we've already done underneath the clear embossing powder. I will then heat set it. If your heat embossing isn't very smooth, you can do a second later layer of heat embossing as I did on my first card example. Now for the fun part, we can apply different dye inks on top of this. You could even use pigment ink or oxide ink if you want. I'm using Simon Says Stamp Saturated Inks. This is a great dye ink with a beautiful selection of colors. And I'm applying that ink on top using a blending brush. After I apply a color, I use a dry cloth to buff the excess ink off of those heat embossed areas. Now what's happening here is the heat embossing is resisting the ink we put on top. So it's trapping that tech stamping that we did with the light gray ink underneath the heat embossing, allowing it to show through in those areas. They appear white here. And then anywhere we put ink around it, it will have that beautiful color but the heat embossing will resist it. Always be sure to buff off the extra ink with a dry cloth so you have crisp, clear results. So now check this out. You can see that text stamping underneath the clear embossing and then the bold color around it. This is such a fun technique when you have two background stamps, one that has a lot of detail to it and one that has a lot of solid area to it. I will say if you want to step this up even more, you can do an iron off embossing technique so it's super smooth. I will link to a video that shows that up here on the top right and in my description below. I like this technique so much that I thought I'd do a second example. Now this time I started with a light pool cardstock instead of white, which gives a bit less contrast. So I have my stamping tool here. I have a sticky mat, which you could skip if you wanted to. It just helps to hold it in place. Now I have that same Simon Says Stamp Friendship Background Stamp that has that nice text that has lots of detail. And I'm stamping that with a slightly darker pool colored ink. This is Simon Says Stamp Surf Ink. I wanted a subtle tone on tone look. You could go for more contrast if you want to, but this time I'm going for subtle. Next, I will heat set this to make sure that ink is completely dry because I plan to heat emboss on top and I don't want the embossing powder to stick to any of this text wet ink. I once again, I have the concentric heart stamp and I'm placing that on top. And then I will stamp this with clear embossing powder after using my anti-static powder tool. Be sure to double stamp if you think your ink pad might be a little dry or if you just want to be sure to get great heat embossed results. Now I can add my clear embossing powder. Make sure to add the powder as your paper is horizontal so it's really touching all of the exposed ink and then just kind of lightly tap off the excess. 
Then you can heat set it and you'll see that the clear embossing will get a little bit darker than the background. Now for the fun part where we add ink on top. Again, you can use dye inks, distress oxide ink, uh, distress inks, or pigment inks. And use any kind of blending brush that you want. After you've applied ink on top, you'll want to use a dry cloth to buff off that excess ink because some of the ink may end up sitting on top of the embossing powder, but it will wipe away very easily, giving you that trapped heat embossed look. So the heat embossing is resisting this ink that we put on top and it is trapping that text stamping that we did underneath giving you this a fun result. It's just a great technique for using two background stamps or individual stamps together as one. So here is a closer look. You can see that trapped stamping underneath the heat embossing. Such a fun technique. And here is the first background that we did. We started with white cardstock, so you have a little more contrast there. It's fun to change up the colors of cardstock underneath and the colors of inks you use to get different looks. Now we have two backgrounds here that we can cut down to add to a card in various ways. I like to use large rectangle dies to figure out where I want to trim this down, or you can just use your trimmer. Oh, and by the way, sometimes when you put ink on top of heat embossing, it kind of gets a dull look to the heat embossed area. The way to kind of make that shine again is to just reheat it a little bit. If you reheat it with your heat gun, it'll get that shine back and you'll have that fantastic heat embossed look. But if you prefer to have no shine, try that uh, iron off embossing technique. Again, I'll link to it up here on the top right and in my description below. Let's finish off the purple card first. I kept the design very simple since the background has so much to offer. I used the Simon Says Stamp CZ Design Swoopy Love You die set. So it has the words love you and the uh, shadow die to go along with it. I cut both from white cardstock and glued them together. Then I die cut the words love you from silver cardstock and glued that on top. So we have that bit of shine. I trimmed my background down and added it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. And I also scattered a few silver die cut hearts around the background. Here you can get a closer look at that trapped resist technique where we trapped that text stamping below the heat embossing and then put lots of ink around it. Now for the blue card, I used the Simon Says Stamp Fancy Love die set. This cuts the word love and has the shadow die included. I also used an older Simon Says Stamp CZ design set called Clean Line Stacks. In here, there is a sentiment that says sending hugs that I thought would look nice underneath the word love. I cut the word love from silver cardstock and then the shadow from white. I wanted the heart to stand out more, so I used the Simon Says Stamp Mini Hearts Party Die to cut a navy heart, and I added that on top of the heart in the word love. For a little bit of sparkle on that heart to make it stand out, I used my Tonic Aqua Shimmer Pen. So here's a look at the completed card. It is four and a quarter by five and a half inches, and you have the shine on the word love and the sparkle on that little heart in the center of the O. Now here you can also see a closer look at that trapped heat embossed resist technique. So underneath that clear heat embossing, we have trapped that light pool cardstock along with the stamping from the text stamp. Then around that, we have that bold color that we've added on top. This is definitely a technique that is worth trying and a great way to combine different stamps and inks for a new look. Okay, it's time for our next heat embossing technique that I like so much. And this one is a kind of a faux mono print, or you can call it an ink lifting technique. Now for this one, I'm starting with plain white cardstock and I'm applying a very heavy, generous, very generous amount of distress ink. You could also use dye inks here. Any dye ink that will react with water will work. Distress inks are the best. Now over that heavy amount of tumbled glass ink, I'm applying a bit of darker colors or different colors on top. I used Evergreen Bow. Here I'm using uh, Mermaid Lagoon. I'll also add some Blueprint Sketch. 
but you want a heavy amount of ink. Because I put that heavy amount of tumbled glass underneath, I can just put a little bit of these darker colors on top for a bit of variation. But be sure to be generous with the ink. That's what makes this technique work. Again, any water reactive ink will work. Distress inks are optimal. Okay, so once you're done adding lots of ink to your white cardstock, you need to heat set this completely. You want to make sure all of that ink is dry. We plan to heat emboss on top of this, and if this ink is still wet, it'll mess up our heat embossed image. So once it's completely dry and heat set, I'll put that into the corner of my Misty stamping tool, use my anti-static powder tool, and then I'm stamping the same background stamp with Versamark ink on top of our inked background. You will not be able to see it much. It's very subtle. But when you add your clear embossing powder, you'll see it a bit more, but still it's very subtle. We're gonna do a technique that makes it stand out more and gives you a bonus background. Now it's time to do this faux monoprint or watercolor lift technique. I have another piece of regular white cardstock that's cut to the same size. I'm creating a little hinge at the top to tape them together so that the heat embossing and inking is back to back with that white uh, cardstock piece. So you can see here, it's kind of like a little folder. Then I have my die cut machine ready as if I were doing regular die cutting. I will spray my inked surface, this is the inked and heat embossed surface, generously with water. You want it to kind of puddle up in there. Then I will close my little hinge that I created with the extra piece of cardstock, place it into my die cut machine, put the other cutting plate on top, and run it through. Again, I'm running this through as if I was just doing basic die cutting, but all I'm doing is squishing these two pieces of cardstock together. I will then carefully pull these pieces apart. If they don't want to pull apart or they start to tear, heat set them first and then they won't tear. And now we have two backgrounds. One is super soft with an impression. You can see that soft ink impression and you can see the white lines from the heat embossing. And the other one has the bold heat embossing, that ink that was trapped underneath the heat embossing, and the uh, cardstock around it has a soft kind of velvety look. This is a great way to get two backgrounds from one. And if you want to see this technique in much more detail with more examples, I will link to a video up here on the top right and in my description below. I call this faux monoprint or uh, heat emboss watercolor lifting, but really it ends up with two great backgrounds for two different cards. Let's start with this background first. I'm using the uh, Simon Says Stamp CZ Design Heart Pains Background Die, and I'm cutting it from the entire background, kind of centering it on the pattern. I cut the same die from white cardstock, and I'm gluing the outline white die cut onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. I will take the colorful pieces I die cut up there on the top, and inlay them into the openings on this white die cut. Now there are many ways you can use a die like this, but inlay is one of the easiest. So now I can just put some liquid adhesive into the openings and pop each of the die cut pieces into the place. This is a fun way to use background dies like this heart panel die. Now for the center of the card, I used the older Simon Says Stamp Detail Floral Heart Die. I cut it twice from white cardstock and glued it to the center of the card. You can see the die over there on the top left. I also added Trinity Stamps Shimmer and Shine Confetti into some of the pattern in the background just for a bit of sparkle. That Hello My Friend is from the Simon Says Stamp CZ Design Hi There Greeting stamp set and die set that I showed you earlier. I stamped it with black ink and then clear heat embossed it for a bit of shine and added that die cut to the center of the heart. Now this is again one of my favorite uh, heat embossed techniques to do this kind of faux monoprint look or you could call it watercolor lift technique with heat embossing. Regardless, it ends up with two backgrounds that can be used for two different cards. This one's a little more bold. The next one's a little more soft. 
Here is that softer background. Remember, it has that impression of the white outline from the heat embossing from the technique that we did. Now, I didn't get to create a card with this. I ran out of time, but I'm saving it for a future card. I love two for one backgrounds. Now it's time for my fifth and final favorite heat embossing technique. However, stay tuned. I do have a bonus card using the scraps from the other cards that we've created. Now this fifth technique is to stamp with colored ink and then clear emboss on top. It makes it look like you have lots of different colors of embossing powder and it makes your images stand out even more. For this, I'm using the Simon Says Stamp from the Heart 6x8 stamp set, along with the Simon Says Stamp Nested Rounded Hearts dies. These work really well together or separately. You can see how the dies cut out the sentiments nicely. I'm using that biggest sentiment up there on the top left. Now, for this, I am going to use multiple colors of ink. You could use absolutely any type of inks you want here. I'm using Simon's Stamp Saturated Dye Inks, and I'm using a blending brush to apply the ink just to a little area of the stamp. You'll notice that I'm stamping it a few times, and that is because I'm not taking the ink pad directly to the stamp, but instead I'm using a brush to apply the ink. So I'll stamp that two or three times, and that gives me a nice solid image over there on the left-hand side. Next, I'll come in with another color, this time a pink color, and I'll do the same thing. I'll use a blending brush to apply that ink just to that little area of the stamp, making sure it overlaps with the color we've already done. I did decide to put a sticky mat underneath the cardstock. When you don't ink up the entire stamp, sometimes the stamp wants to stick to the cardstock, moving it a bit. By putting the sticky mat underneath the cardstock, I don't have to worry about that. So this time I'm using a purple ink, making sure it overlaps with the pink we've already done. Now I'm using a blue ink and making sure that overlaps with the purple we've already done. Then I'll move on to pool and then I'll move on to green. And I'll stamp these multiple times to make sure we get a solid result. And what we end up with is this heart with this beautiful kind of rainbow blend across the image. This works great with any large image you may have. I wanted this colorful image to stand out even more, so I decided to add clear embossing on top. So I put it back into the corner of my stamping tool, and I'm stamping right on top with clear embossing ink. This is Versamark ink, any clear embossing ink works, and I'm stamping that on top of our colored ink. I will then add clear embossing powder and heat set it. And this will look like I used lots of different colors of embossing powder, but really I only used the basic clear powder over multiple colors of ink. Now I want this to stand out even more. This is the focal point of our card. So I'm gonna let it cool and put it back into the corner of my stamping tool and stamp on top of that cooled heat embossing with Versamark ink. Then add another layer of clear embossing powder on top and heat set it. I did this earlier in the video and it really makes a huge difference in real life. Now when I heat set this, I'll end up with what looks kind of like a jelly bean image. We'll have this colorful image and it'll have a nice domed look to it. Very smooth, raised, shiny embossing. Now I'll use the nested rounded heart that coordinates with it and I'll tape it in place and run it through my die cut machine. Here's a closer look at that raised smooth heat embossing that we have on top of that colorful image. This is a great way to get a multicolor look out of whatever stamp you may have. So I added that heart onto a white note card where I have white heat embossed the jumble heart background stamp that I showed you earlier in this video. That white heat embossing on the white note card just gives a tone on tone look that's hard to see in the video or photos, but in real life it adds a lot of interest. I also really like that raised kind of jelly bean look that we have on the sentiment. All right, now I have a bonus card for you where I use some of the scraps that we have left over from today's cards on a card that really came together quite quickly. And this is something you can do with any scraps you may have. So here you can see all of the scraps that we have left over from some of our cards from today. 
and I'm using the Simon Says Stamp heart chain die to cut from those scraps. This die will cut lots of hearts that I can inlay into a white die cut, which you'll see in a moment. I've got lots of scraps. I never throw these away. I keep them in a drawer so you can dig through all of your scraps and find pieces that would work for this. So I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. And I've cut some white outline die cuts from that heart chain die. I'm gluing them kind of diagonal along the bottom of our card, making sure that they're close together. Any kind of die that has openings would work for this. After I have those white outlines glued onto our card, I'll use the die to create little hearts that I can inlay into the white openings. Now I used the scraps from all the different cards I created today. It's a nice mix and match. They don't go together well, but when you glue them all together on a card, somehow it works. So save all of those inky stamped backgrounds because you can use them on a card like this. So there you can see our inlaid background. I added a thanks sentiment from the Hi There Greetings stamp set from Simon Says Stamp and CZ Design. And I used that heart chain die to cut additional white outline die cuts that I glued on top of the ones already in the card just for some extra dimension. There you can see how all of our extra scraps went to good use for a simple card design that looks elaborate but didn't take long to put together. Okay, so there you see five of my favorite heat embossing techniques plus a bonus card for using your scraps. If you're interested in the supplies I use, I always provide links to them below in my YouTube description, but I do encourage you to go to my blog where I have much more information. I share discount codes and sales and more. At the end here, I'll link to a couple other videos that I mentioned throughout this one. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you again soon.